been with the Brahmi Kumaris since March of 1981, so 39 years, and um, there is a little center in Seal Beach with little class places outside, and I've had the fortune to be involved in many beautiful international projects, so I very much um, enjoyed many of the opportunities um, that Papa has given me. So, and I've learned a lot. So I look forward to sharing with you all. Om Shanti and welcome to the Tuesday night class for San Francisco and Anabuti Retreat Center. And I'm Diane, so Sister Diane, if you like. Beautiful. Okay. Welcome, everyone. Okay. Shall we meditate for a little bit? Huh? Okay. So. Allow yourself to relax. and allow there to be the light of peace around you. So breathe in that light of peace. And exhale any tightness. Let that light of peace around you body and soul. And let your muscles relax. Baba's light of peace is a special light. It's a light that's pure, that's comforting. And that's full of the softest love. And as you breathe in that light of peace, and it surrounds you, body and soul. Enjoy that. Let go of any happiness. With the body safe and relaxed. the soul, the beautiful being of peace, begin to flow. I fly beyond the sun and the stars. to the world of peace, the world beyond sound. There, in that beautiful dimension of life, Feel a ray of love. That love is coming from a beautiful star in the distance. And the quality of that ray 
lets me know that this one is my eternal mother and father. And I, the light, fly closer to that one. To float in front of that one. Absorbing love. For this one, it's the ocean of love. And as I begin, to absorb that love. I become lighter and lighter. I am a light. A tiny, tiny star. And I let myself experience being light. And light yet concentrated focus. And I totally focus on Shiva. The seed. The source of love. And as I focus, I absorb that love and am absorbed by that love. I'm lighter and lighter until I feel myself to just be a light. Floating next to the most loving one. Absorbing this pure love, which is so healing, so pure, so unconditional. I go into the silence of this love. Mm -hmm. 
And as I absorb more light of love from God, that love deepens. The more I take in love and peace from Baba, from the Supreme Soul, the more I am filled with strength. Spiritual strength. The freedom to be me. And the experience of being equal. Om Shanti. So, um, Elizabeth told me that the topic was building trust in relationships. So first, um, I'd like to ask you to reflect for a few moments. And I'd like you to reflect on being a child. And when you're children, who do you trust? Who is worthy of your trust? So think of perhaps one or two people that you really trusted. What were their qualities? What things did they do? What things did they not do? And if you had, as a child, to give advice to the adults of the world, to all the adults of the world, and you were a child, you were maybe five or six or seven, or maybe 12 or 11. What advice would you give to the adults of the world? What would you tell them that they needed to do to earn? Stop, stop saying what is wrong. It's not right. Yeah. Stop that. Stop so saying. you're all between five and 12. What other advice do you have for adults of the world? Be more gentle. Be more gentle. Okay. So do what is right. Be more gentle. Stop comparing. Well, I would say, I'm sorry. Stop comparing. I was, I, w I was asking them not to tell me what is right, what is wrong. Too much. Don't, Don't tell me what's wrong. Yeah. Don't tell me what's yeah. wrong or what's right so much. And I'm hearing Michael say, do what's right. <laughs> That's an agreement here. Do what's right and stop telling me all the time, especially when you're not doing it. <laughs> okay, great. As a child, I think I simply trusted everybody. They did things I didn't like, but I trusted them. Mm -hmm. and, 
And if I were to give them advice, it'd be to give what's in your heart instead of thinking what other people are doing, or what might happen, which, which is a version of do what's right. Great. Great. Thank you, Michael. I had the opposite experience. It's very hard for me to recall feelings of trust as a child. They were there, but it wasn't, it's not so easy to connect to them. There were some people I could trust, but lots of people I couldn't as well. Mm -hmm. About now, now that you're at all adults, unless there's anybody else that would like to um, share first about your advice as a five-year-old, anyone? Your advice as a five-year-old or a 12-year-old to the adults of the world anymore? I guess I would say uh, protect me from when I need to be protected. Protect me when I need to be protected. Absolutely. Beautiful. Okay, great. Thank you for sharing that. You know, one of the things that I do sometimes when I'm doing workshops is I have people build a trust wall. And so in a trust wall, I have them make bricks and in the brick, they have to put in the things that create trust in a relationship. And there's the foundation. So the foundation is very, very important and it has to be strong. And it's sort of built on iron clad rules. And then there's other things that make the wall beautiful. There's, um, you know, decorative pieces, or maybe it's painted a certain way, or it has beautiful things on it, or beautiful mosaics, or different kinds of stones. Um, and there's things that make it look beautiful that are pluses in a relationship. But there's certain kinds of foundations if there's going to be trust. And I'm sort of um, at a crossroads between a couple of you, because I always say that I love many. Um, I actually have love for, you know, my training as a BK. One of the things that we're really into is good wishes and pure feelings for every soul. So the training is to have these good wishes and pure feelings for every soul. And I can actually say that I have trust, uh, that I have love for many, 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 many souls. Um, but I always say I trust very few. And so it's an interesting thing. Because at what level do I trust? I trust some people at some level, some people at another level. But for me, um, there are certain foundations that are essential in building trust. And so what would those foundations be for you? What are... Let's say it, this is so hard because you're not. I don't think like that. Okay. When I those things, but I think for me, a real important thing to be honesty and to tell me what you think, and also to accept me rather than judge me. Okay, beautiful. So to be honest, tell me what you think. And what was the third one, Michael? I missed what you said. Okay. So to be honest, honesty, honesty tell and me accept me rather than judge me. Accept me rather than judge me. I think those are incredibly beautiful cornerstones. Um, would anybody else like to add? Spending time together. Spending time together. Okay. Wonderful. Anything else, anyone? Um reliability reliability absolutely for a child um, it's so important to keep promises isn't it that if you promise something to a child it's really important to do it 
Yeah. That could be to add consistency too. Okay, wonderful, you guys. See, you have it all down. So don't judge me, accept me, be honest with me, um, spend time with me, be consistent, be reliable. Okay, fabulous. Um, so for me also, um, if I look at who I really trust, one of the things that's really important for me is, like Michael said, I want to be accepted. But with a friend, with friends that are closed, you know, with some friends, you can really share anything. And I guess that's why I say, you know, maybe I trust a few. Because I want to be sure that after I share something that's negative, that they're still going to love me just as much. <laughs> you know, people that really know who you are. And I'm very fortunate. I have friends. Um, my, one of my closest friends, I've known her since I was eight. So I always tease her and say I'm the only one that remembers the name of her first husband. But, um, you know, we know each other so well, and we've known each other over time. And so when I'm going through something, I often will go to her. And when she's going through something, she comes to me. And we can talk about it. But at the end of the conversation, you know that you are valued and loved just as much now, if not even more than before. And so um, a really, really close trusting relationship, I think there's the aspect of being able to be vulnerable. You know, one of the things was says to be, said was to be honest, um, to tell me how you feel. And that is another beauty of a trusting relationship. And that's one of the things of what, that we want. We want people to be honest, to be true, to be, um, to be honest, to be true, to be kind. Um, I remember, um, and, and also to simply just love. There's another perspective. Great, please. There's another perspective I thought of that relates to that. That is for me to trust you. I really have to feel okay about myself. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. And, um, mm -hmm. yes, some people have the misfortune of not trusting anyone, um, which is really um, incredibly sad. Um, but the more we trust, the more we're comfortable with ourselves, the more we're comfortable with others. Um, one of the things that I do is that I do workshops. And one of the things that I'm big about is people being comfortable with their own emotions and their own feelings. And sometimes spiritual people will look at their positive feelings and approve of themselves if they have positive feelings, but not approve of themselves if they have negative feelings or negative emotions. And I think it's so important to lovingly accept our whole self, to lovingly accept our positive feelings and our elevated feelings and our beautiful qualities and our peace and our love and our benevolence and our kindness. But I think it's also important to lovingly accept ourselves when we're afraid or we're scared or um, we're angry. And because if you accept yourself, then it's sort of like when a sanskara pops into your mind, we can give it a hard time or with our intellect, we can look at it and say, okay, where are you angry? What's underneath? Okay, why am I afraid? Or why am I hurt? 
And I think this loving acceptance of our own feelings. And I think one of the things that Baba does is that he heals um, with his love, he heals pain a great deal. And so I think the more comfortable we are in that acceptance of ourselves, the more we're comfortable with many others and the more that we're comfortable with them in all situations, including when they're in pain. So it's a very special thing um, that allows us, there's a saying that, you know, in America, to be comfortable in your own skin. And I think this is, this is something that happens when we're comfortable and accepting of our own emotions. And then, no matter what state people are in, you can be comfortable with them. I have a comment or a question to that. Um, this is for, um, I think I, from, I, from childhood, you know, we are taught that some experiencing certain types of emotions and expressing them is um, taboo or it's not, you know, not proper. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of us grow up with that, like boys don't cry or, you know, you shouldn't get angry or you should, you know, express your only the happy feelings that you feel and not really talk about difficulties or problems. And, you know, so I think what you say and describe is, is beautiful, right? To say, accept yourself, accept yourself as a whole with every emotion that you feel. However, as a child and growing up, society and, and your family and your parents and everybody teaches you otherwise. So I was wondering if you have some, shed some thoughts on that and how does one dissociate from that? When does one dissociate from that? And how do you then start accepting Wonderful comment and wonderful question. Thank you so much. That's very interesting for him. Um, you're absolutely right. We're told not to express things and we're told not to feel things. And I think that it behooves us not to express a lot of things to a lot of people. But we all on this call are in a path transformation, aren't we? And if we look at the role of religions in the past couple of thousand years, um, some of the religions in recent decades and recent centuries have done a lot of guilt inducement. And um, there's um, an acceptance of punishment and there's guilt inducement and there's social pressures to try to get people to, to conform. And so this guilt inducement, this social pressure, um, even punishment has been used to try to control people and make them in a special, uh, make them behave a certain way. And so that is history. But now we're in a path of spiritual transformation. And so we're looking at um, you know, the information of the BKs is that you are a soul. You are naturally good. You are naturally benevolent. You are naturally loving and peaceful and sweet and patient and powerful. And we have this incredible opportunity to connect with God. And so we get to connect with this ocean of love and this ocean of peace and rekindle and recharge these beautiful qualities. So for him, I'm not saying that we can express these emotions to anyone. And so that's probably why I say that I trust you. I trust many, 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 many people. Many, 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 many people. But I only trust few, a few to share my very deepest negative feelings. <laughs> I trust literally thousands 
to share my positive feelings with. And if, like very often, I'll go through stories, I can tell you some stories, but I'll go through stories and I'll tell people about something. Okay, so um, anyhow, I was in, in Poland and I was, uh, you know, supposed to give this talk and I was comfortable talking to 30 or 40 people, but I wasn't comfortable talking to, to 400. And so I was, you know, scared and I looked longingly, longingly at the exit door and I thought, well, I can either leave um, the Brahma Kumaris or I can go up on stage and give this talk. And so I got up on stage and I, and I, uh, you know, Baba managed to hold my intellect and it was just a fabulous experience. Um, and people afterwards, they said, oh, that was so beautiful, the love, the light. And I said, thank you very much. And to myself, I said, well, it wasn't me, you know. So, um, you know, I can talk about experiences like this and tell them how I had to look at my sanskaras and how I figured out which sanskara I needed to change. And so I could tell people stories afterwards um, about a transformational process. But when I made that comment about trusting a few, it's with a negativity that I'm not supposed to speak about. And I too was raised to be, you know, to be mannerly and, and um, et cetera. But in a path of transformation, what we're doing in Raj Yoga is we're learning how to increase our self-awareness. Increase our self-awareness of the love and the peace and the royalty and the benevolence inside. But in increasing our awareness, it behooves us to be aware of negativities and when they happen. I remember Daddy Janky, um, who was the administrative head of the BKs for many years. Well, not um, for many years, but she was once asked, how often do you think of yourself? And people expected her to say something like 5%. I completely focus on Baba. I never think of myself. That was the answer that was expected. And what she said instead is I think of myself 95% of the time. Now, why was that the case? Because she was in self-awareness of what she was doing. So one of the things we do is, as spiritual people that are into this path of Raj Yoga and spiritual transformation and growing our self-awareness, we do affirmations during the day. We might do, I am a jewel of contentment, or I'm a star of peace, or I'm an angel of light and love. But we do affirmations during the day to keep those um, qualities in our mind and in our intellect and to grow that energy and to make it easy to connect with God. Okay, so we're doing that. But it behooves us to also be aware of when I'm scared. Because when I'm scared, it's like a little sand scar, or we could say, a hurt child or a hurt adult, but it's another sanskar. It's, an, it's one that's formed in the last couple of thousand years, and it's bothering you, and it says, I'm scared. But if you don't bring in a loving voice, if you let it be the only voice, you can get more afraid. Once a person called me and they said, I'm really afraid. And I said, of what? And they said, I'm really afraid of being afraid. I'm so afraid of being afraid that I'm afraid I'm going to be, become crazy, which was very, very fascinating. And I said, well, instead, why don't you just observe it for a moment and accept it and just say, hello, fear. 
oh, it is fear. Where do I carry it? Okay. What am I afraid of? Maybe I'm afraid of not being loved. I'm not being valued. What am I afraid of? And so in Raj Yoga, what we do is we um, bring forth the nurturing angelic self or the nurturing wise self, or you could call it a nurturing parent. And you gently talk to that part and say, you know, what do you need? What, how can I protect you? What can we take from God so I can help protect you? So that you don't have to be so scared because I will protect you. You tell me what you're perceiving and I will help. And so I remember once I was giving a talk many years later and my little child, my little samskara of fear had popped up even though I was much older. And so I said, oh, I'm really afraid. I haven't met these people in a few years. So I'm afraid they don't love me as much. And I said to the little, so that's what the little girl said. And I said, oh, so you're afraid of that? And she said, yes. I said, well, I think that they will. But how about you go up with me when we're giving class? And I'll take your hand and you can be behind me and I'll protect you and I'll give you hugs if you need. And she said, yes. So drawing on our loving, nurturing self can allow us to include this other part of ourselves and heal it and protect it. So um, it's interesting because in Raj Yoga, we're also learning to not guilt induce the self and how not to shame the self. We're learning how to nurture themselves because if I shame myself um, rather than accepting myself, there's a negative emotion, and then I'm applying another negative. So what happens is my energy goes down. But if I nurture myself and ask what that part needs, and I look at the virtue in that, I can take in more love and more peace. And the more love and peace and rekindling I take, the more strength I can take, and the more power I can take. So... What I've observed, for example, with me, is that when people are in pain, I'm totally comfortable with it. And I can just stay loving and powerful and um, be compassionate with them and be a friend to them and um, see them and their beautiful qualities. And I think sometimes it happens in other relationships with people aren't on a such so much a spiritual path that they can make judgments and harsh judgments because you have a certain belief or a certain political view rather than looking at the beauty of the soul and what the soul would really like. Does that make sense for him? Yes. Um Nicely explained. Thank you. Mm, my pleasure. My pleasure. It is a it is a lovely thing. So I'm supposed to be giving a talk on um, on building trust in relationships. Um, I wrote a parenting book once, and um, the parenting book is the beginning of the title because it's a rather long one is nurturing with love and wisdom, disciplining with peace and respect. And almost at the end of the book, because it's a long book, and I decided to share everything I wanted to share because, you know, I was really concerned about the, um, the suicide rate in the USA, of, of, um, especially of teens from 11 to 14. I had worked... Um, as a school psychologist for 23 years. And then I've been working with uh, writing living values education books for uh, 24 years. And so I was really concerned about the suicide rate of 11 to 14 year olds. 
So there's a lot of things in that um, for parents and, and building trust, uh, such as um, our language is very important, such as listening, um, keeping promises. Um, but um, Tim said spending time. So the first recommendation is actually the importance of play in us time. Just spend time every day giving your full undivided attention. So um, anyhow, this importance of play in, in us time every day, it builds relationships. And this is one of the most important things in trust, to be able to give your undivided attention to someone and to enjoy them. Um, if it's a child, it might be play. If it's an adult, it might be just listening and um, taking a walk together and being available without the screen in front of your face. Um, but they're the focus. Sometimes people, when the phone rings, people say, because I don't move towards it, and they say, aren't you going to answer it? And I say, no, you're here. Why would I answer it? <laughs> you know, because they're in front of you. Um, so the importance of play in us time, so spending time. The next thing I would say is, um, well, um, to build positive relationships, positive language, appreciation. I think the most important need for all human beings is love. We all want to be loved. We all want to be valued. We all want to be respected, understood, and safe. So, positive language. There's a theorist um, who passed away, um, that his name was Paulo Freire, a Brazilian educator. And he once said, every sentence in the classroom is a moral decision. And I love that, what he said, because I think every sentence is a moral decision not just in the classroom, but with everyone, with our friends, with the people that are doing whatever their number is. But every sentence is important. Every sentence is a moral decision. So this positive language to not entering into the body conscious realms where there is blame and criticism and harshness, meanness, revenge, um, but where there's kindness, where there is appreciation. I think appreciation is the best currency of human relationships. Love and appreciation. It doesn't always have to be spoken, but it's through our eyes, through the glance, through the smile, through a thank you. It can be describing something they did from a place of genuine care. Um, it can be telling them a quality that you appreciate. But it's also asking things um, when you do with respect, with sweetness. Um, and if you do have something that isn't okay with you um, and you'd like them to consider doing something differently, to say it in such a caring and respectful way that they can, per, can perhaps hear you. So you start with, I'm feeling this way. Um, and, you know, or I love the, these qualities about you and I really love our relationship. But I've been feeling this way um, because when you do this, um, I feel um, not valued or not important. Or, um, you know, or even when someone's angry with us or angry about whatever it is, 
um, to say, um, what's happening? How can I help? Um, what's going on? Um, what are you concerned about? So these types of things, um, there is a model I use. I use, we can call it a Dharma model. Um, but when we treat other people in such a way that they feel loved, respected, valued, understood, and safe, I think there is trust. Um, and, um, yeah, so those are two components. Another component is listening. I think listening is an act of building trust. Trust in the relationship. And I think listening helps them accept themselves and understand themselves more. And I think that is a step in trusting themselves more. Listening is such a gift and it's something that we don't do often enough. Often people spring to give a solution, um, but they don't pause to listen and let the other people know that they hear them. So those are a couple of things that are the building of the relationship. And I think that this staying above this line in the top half of the model, in kindness, in benevolence, in soul consciousness, in your humanity as a human being, is so important. And I think the connection that we have with Baba allows us to have the strength and the peace and the love and the benevolence to fuel that during the day. So in this parenting book that I wrote, the next to the last chapter, it's a really long book because I decided to just say everything I wanted to say because I was concerned about the state of the world and was concerned about children. And so chapter 33 <laughs> is a chapter on when there's been anger in the family. And it's actually about rebuilding trust. And um, so it goes through these simple, simple steps of um, positive things. Like if there isn't trust in the relationship, there's really usually some pretty good reasons. <laughs> somebody's not keeping their promises. Somebody's not being reliable. Somebody's not spending time. Somebody may have an addiction problem and uh, isn't being responsible and perhaps is being mean. So there's these steps of saying good morning, beginning with positive relationship, learning what to do instead of going into punishment, learning how to deal with it in another way, learning how to say to yourself, um, learning how to time yourself out, you know, kids, kids, and um, our closest friends very often know when we're going to be negative before we know we're going to be negative because they can sense it vibrationally. So timing yourself out, going for a walk or a cup of tea or saying, hey. Um, so for, for people that are in that state, um, you know, there's a step-by-step -step process of education and of things not to do. But I think these, you, all of you on this call don't do those things. But yes, that foundation. Keeping promises is a foundation. Another foundation for trust is confidentiality. So when anyone shares something that they feel vulnerable about, to never repeat it. There is a situation that happened once with me and another person decades ago. And 
I always knew that that person would be embarrassed if I ever told the story. And so I have never told the story. It wasn't that something wrong was done. It was just something was done that that person would have found embarrassing to be known. <laughs> so um, this person happens to be a very eminent person. And um, I was told a month ago that that eminent person shared that she trusts, really trusts, just two people in the world, but one of them was me. <laughs> and so I, I thought of the story um, that I didn't share. <laughs> so confidentiality, having regard for the feelings of others. Because, um, you know, there's certain kinds of things that we can share and that we need to share. Um, like Michael said, he wants to, um, he wants to be accepted and everybody does. And I think that's um, something that's very special. I know that once I was um, in Costa Rica decades ago, and I had gone down to Costa Rica with two yogis. And we were there for a conference, a peace conference um, in 1989. And it was really this international conference and it was great. And we had a wonderful time at the conference. I mean, there was some unusual scenes. Um, for example, one day um, we were actually invited um, after a presentation that was given at the conference. We were actually invited by the wife of uh, President Arias um, uh, to give, uh, to do a meditation with her. And um, so we were, they sent, you know, a governmental car with, you know, flags on the car and outriders. And then we were in the presidential entourage on the way to the, you know, Catedral um, Cartago, um, to, um, in Cartago, to, um, you know, for this presentation, you know. And then afterwards, we didn't have a ride. And then the next day, we were stuck in the rain and couldn't get a taxi. So it was a, a, a real uh, contrast of experiences, which I always love. You know, it keeps one humble and uh, <laughs> keeps things in perspective, which is great. But after the conference, uh, Genti Ben asked me if I'd stay there for six weeks. And, um, and I had some feelings about that in the morning. So I remember, um, we had early morning meditation, and then I said to her afterwards, I said, Jenti Ben, you know, I need to share something with you. And she said, oh, what's that? And I said, well, and I cried. And I said, I'm really af afraid of, I'm really um, feeling really insecure. I'm really feeling completely abandoned by you just going off and leaving me here. And, um, you know, I don't have the clothes that I need and, you know, whatever else I said, I forget what I said. And I remember she interrupted me and she said, Diane, I don't know what to do. And I stopped crying and I said, I just need you to listen and to know that you love me. And that's all I need. I'll be fine. Don't worry about it. I'll be perfectly fine. It's just this part of me needs to talk to you. <laughs> so she goes, okay. So I went back and cried told her the rest of the story and that it was fine. <laughs> but, um, you know, I really trust that soul. And um, because she's someone that doesn't think less of me, because I do that. 
Okay, I've talked forever, so I'm going to, um, let me see, is there anything else that I think is really important? So, let me see, time, and making time, because they're a friend, and there's trust keeping our promises, positive language, appreciation, love, listening, keeping confidentiality, not going into this realm of blame, of shame, of um, meanness, but communicating what we need. I once recently had a friend um, and he does this blame thing. And um, he always, he was wanting to establish who's right and who's wrong. So he's wanting to establish blame. And so I was surprised because I've known this yogi for many, many decades. And all of a sudden this was a new behavior. And so when he did it, I just said, you know, I don't play the blame game. And so I said that again. And I said it again, probably in a two-month or three-month period. I said it about three times. And they completely stopped playing the blame game with me. So it's really nice to not play the blame game and the I'm right and you're wrong game. But to relate to each other as equal human beings. Not I'm the rescuer and you're the victim, but equal. And this is one of the things that is so incredible about God. Because God says, you can become equal to me. I mean, isn't that amazing? And of course, in some ways we, we don't believe him because we know we'll never be equal and that we will never be constant throughout time like God is. But I think that what he does mean is that at some point in time, however briefly, even if it's just a few years in the cycle, but at some point in time, with our spiritual effort, we will be able to achieve that beauty of vibrations in which we can have pure peace, pure love, pure benevolence. And I think this is something that's lovely. So do we enter into relationships and build trust by treating others as equals and knowing that all souls are equal? So we do it from a genuine place. I think this also builds trust. Um, so I was recently cut off abruptly without any explanation by a person I was in relationship with and who I trusted. Since this trust seems to have been very misplaced, how do I work with this? Okay. I'm sorry that that happened. Um, I'm sure that that was very painful. And um, I guess what I'd say is um, there is a deep connection between hurt and fear and anger and um, need. And if you're in a relationship and, um, and some people have the sanskaras of being hurt and perhaps a sanskar of rejection in their past and they trust you and you trust them. And sometimes if something little tiny is done, um, they're so oversensitive because of their hurt 
that they can go into a rejection response. Um, people that have a lot of hurt um, will react very strongly if they feel a rejection. And for some people that have not been loved, um, it's such a relief to finally feel loved. So their level of hurt is so much deeper if they perceive a slight, slight rejection. And so then they can cut off very quickly. They don't have the, um, I think in current terminology, we would call it the emotional bandwidth but they don't have the emotional um, health or the emotional maturity to be able to share their feelings and to be able to be vulnerable with you. So they weren't able to continue. But, um, so, um, I'm sorry that happened, but all people are not that way. Um, you know, it's just that people with, with deep, deep unresolved hurt and anger can be that way. Thank you. That really helps. Good. I'm glad. Shall we do that healing meditation? Yeah. Yes. Let yourself relax, breathe in deeply. And breathe out any tightness, any tension. And let Baba surround you with a light of peace. Breathe in that light of peace. And let the muscles relax more. And let go of any heaviness. And remember that you are a soul. It's naturally good. Totally loved by God, treasured by your eternal mother and father. And breathe in that light of peace into the body, around the soul. And with a physical body, okay, let Baba invite you to be your body of light and to imagine yourself in the subtle regions, the dimension of the light of a hundred full moons. And in this dimension of light, let us sit together in a circle around Baptata. And as we're sitting in a circle with God in the center, and us in the current form that we're in, just made out of light. Take love from God, from Baba, from Baptada. And let yourself just be the soul. The light of peace, the light of love. And then let Baba come up to you and give you this beautiful carb of light. It's like a cloak of light, a surrounding of light. It's about four or five inches thick. 
and it's the light of love. So as you sit, imagine being in that place with this beautiful cloak of the light of love around you and enjoy that light of love. It's a very thick cloak of the light of love. And it's so relaxing, it's so nurturing. So nice to feel this cloak of love all around you. So relax, take in that love from God and feel totally safe. We are completely safe. in peace and love, surrounded by benevolence. If it's easier for you to imagine where you're sitting right now, let yourself imagine it, just sitting where you are right now. So where you're sitting right now, put on your car of the light of love or your cloak of the light of love. This is a gift from God. Okay, good. And now identify where your pain is. Everybody carries pain, especially old souls. Sometimes we carry it in our body, in our throat, and sometimes in our chest, sometimes in our stomach, and sometimes in our gut. Very often it can be as big as your handprint, or sometimes it's smaller, sometimes a lot smaller, sometimes it's a little bigger. But wherever it is, just be slightly aware of it. What color is it? Is it gray? Is it a light gray? What color of gray is it? So slightly be aware of where you hold your pain. And now be aware of your cloak of light once again. Sit where you are and imagine your cloak of light. Imagine how beautiful it is surrounding you four or five inches. What color is your cloak of light? Is it rose colored? Or is it green? Or does it sparkle with stars of blue? Enjoy your cloak of the light of love. And as you enjoy it and relax, begin to absorb that love into your body your physical body or your body of light or both. And then just enjoy absorbing that light of love. And as you begin to absorb that light, you get more and more relaxed. And soon that light of love may gently touch the edges of the pain just gently, that that light of love accepts that sanskar, that pain that's old. And maybe that light of love asks, do you have a message for me? What's your message? And listen to what that sanskar says, that feeling says. And maybe ask what you can do for that. Maybe to be gentle, maybe to protect, maybe to just treat with love. 
maybe to accept. So ask, how can I lovingly accept you more? Or protect you or do what you need? And as that part, that feeling is answering you, lovingly surround it with love lovingly accept it. And maybe, so just be aware of that love, just slightly aware of the sorrow, but be aware of the love, let the intensity of the feeling of that love increase. And maybe you'd like God to put even more love around you. So connect with God and allow him to put even more love around you. Lovely. So now that love gently, gently touches that gray area maybe a little tiny bit of it begins to let go and dissolve a bit. And you say, I am going to lovingly accept you because I know you have gifts for me. I know you have wisdom. I know you know what people should do. <laughs> So you give that part love. And now just totally be, totally be aware of your love and Baba's love. So take more love in from Baba. And let that love comfort all of you. Breathe in. And breathe out any heaviness. You are light. You are good. You are love. You are loved by God. You are a treasure that has the courage to transform. Much, much love. Good night, everyone. Thank you for joining.